Hi, and welcome to Patient World. Today, we're delighted to have a special guest, Dr. Adegbala. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's all our pleasure. So can you start by telling the viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm a physician scientist. I have my MD and my PhD um, is actually in oncology. And um, after I finished my PhD, I did um, my medical training, uh, in, first in pathology, and then I finished up in radiology, uh, specifically in nuclear medicine at um, in Philly at UPenn. And then went into industry for many years where I worked in drug development. I um, I became, I was chief medical officer at G Healthcare and um, chief scientific officer at Quest. And it was really, really hectic. So I had a, you know, I had a team, um, people from, uh, from Asia to San Francisco. So my days typically started very early in Asia and um, ended very late in in um San Francisco and uh, in um California. Yeah. And at that time I had triplets. So it was so, oh, wow. so hectic. Yeah. I always tell people don't do it. <laughs> but it was really, really hectic. And that's when I uh stepped back and um sort of started getting more in touch with um lifestyle and um managing um the stresses and the issues that come with life and just uh, taking care of life not only through medications, which is what I was trained to do and the whole uh, scientific method, but also through making lifestyle changes so that we can um, stop disease, reverse disease and prevent disease just by uh, making changes in our lifestyle. And then, and so um, to, to, for, in for the pursuit of that, I did a lifestyle medicine fellowship. I'm sorry, I did a lifestyle medicine certification. So just to be clear, uh, so I'm I became certified in lifestyle medicine, and I also um started Casa de Sante, which is a gut health brand. We make products for people who have digestive issues such as IBS, IBD, or um or um functional gut disorders. Uh, we make Products for people who are on the low FODMAP diet. So all our products are low FODMAP certified. They're gut friendly. And we also have a number of gut uh, friendly supplements as well. Okay. And uh, we've been doing that for the last few years, but we all, we just added a program whereby we have, um, we offer meal plans. We have a team of dietitians and clinicians. Uh, you fill out a, you fill out a, a survey, what your intolerances are and what you want to what goals you want to achieve whether it's you would you know you want to get your digestive health better you want to get rid of symptoms or you want to even you want to lose weight or anything but you want to do it taking into consideration your intolerances and what um what you want to eliminate or include in your diet and um so we do that and then we also have a, a plan whereby you can see a dietitian and uh, uh, on a month a month and a coach on a month to month basis so that's uh, a little bit about what we're doing now can you explain what vodmap means yeah so yeah that's um it's quite a mouthful right <laughs> it's uh so it it stands for fermentable oligosaccharides disaccharides monosaccharides and polyols uh, it took me a few years to, you know, say that that smoothly. <laughs> so, uh, but basically, they are just a bunch of fermentable carbohydrates that, when they are in the body, um, when they get into the gut of people who have IBS, instead of um, getting digested, they're fermented by the bacteria in the gut, mm -hmm. and um, and it's sort of like you know fermentation of um, beer, for example. So you end up with a bunch of gas, and that results in bloating, abdominal pain. Um, diarrhea and constipation and causes symptoms. So uh, these FODMAPs um, cause the IBS symptoms in people who have a high, who have um, some hypersensitivity to the signals and um, decreasing FODMAPs in the diet um, helps um, people who have IBS to decrease their symptoms or prevent symptoms. So irritable bowel syndrome is something that's very common. And I remember I once had a patient, he was almost incapacitated by his irritable bowel syndrome. And um, could you give us like an overview of the source of foods that would be high FODMAP versus low FODMAP? 
Sure, sure. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it is. it can be so debilitating for people. And sometimes people just, just don't understand how, um, how impactful it can be um, to people's lives. So in terms of um, puts at a high FODMAP, um, you're thinking about the, the puts like um, disaccharides, like the lact- lactose um, in milk. So mm-hmm. milk, um, dairy and uh, dairy foods that have um, uh, moderate to high levels of lactose would be high FODMAP. Um, gluten containing grains are high FODMAP, but not because of gluten, but because of, um, of FOD- FODMAPs um, called fructans. And so, um, they cause pe- so people think that maybe they have gluten intolerance, but actually they have an intolerance to fruct- fructans in in wheat and all those um, other gluten containing grains. Um, also, onion and garlic uh, also high FODMAP, which is a real problem for a lot of people because I mean onion and garlic is in everything and it's oh, like um, it's so good, <laughs> it's so good, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So. So that's uh, and then you have fruits like um uh, which I guess people are not necessarily surprised about like apples for example that are high in fructose and um and um you also and then also things like beans and broccoli uh, the the thing about pod maps is uh, you sh- you always need to keep to the serving sizes uh so um. Even if something's low FODMAP, if you take too much of it, it can become high FODMAP. And even something like avocado, which is uh, generally, which is high FODMAP, there is a low FODMAP serving size. So you can have a little bit of it. Does how the food is prepared have any impact? Um, um, so, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, it, it actually does. So um, FODMAPs are soluble uh, in water. So when you um, have um, canned beans, for example, and it, it's in water, the FODMAPs, um, you know, leach out. And so you have um, less FODMAPs in the beans. And so you can, you're going you're gonna to eat more of canned beans than you can of uh, regular beans, for example. Uh, the same thing for garlic, you can put it in oil and, um and then, you, and then you can get the garlic essence, and then take the garlic out because the FODMAPs don't are not, don't dissolve in the oil. So it's okay to use garlic oil, but you can use garlic uh, garlic itself, and you can't have any garlic bits or whatever in the oil. Uh, so yeah, definitely the way the food is prepared can change um, the the FODMAP content of the food. Okay, so can you tell the audience a little bit more about the lifestyle medicine? Uh, it's kind of a, a, I don't know how new the concept is, but it's something that people don't typically understand. We're so used to giving medications and addressing the disease once it's there. But I find the that particular area of medicine you know, very intriguing and very valuable. So could you explain a little bit more about what that area of medicine actually does? Yeah, so you're right. It's not Def, it's it's not well known, and um, you know, so much of uh, medicine is sick care rather than preventive care, mm-hmm. and uh, which is which is important because you know we really want to prevent things from happening before they happen, and that's what um, lifestyle medicine um, concentrates on. So there are a number of chronic diseases in the U.S. like um, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, that are um, and um, um so certain certain cancers as well that are a result of um the lifestyle and the environment and just uh, making right changes in our lifestyle can decrease um the the incidence of um some of these diseases and even in some cases studies have shown that it is possible to reverse um diseases such as cardiovascular disease by um lifestyle um strategies uh, such as diet for example uh, so lifestyle medicine really um, concentrates on using uh, these lifestyle approaches such as uh, diet, exercise, uh, sleep, um, and also life, other lifestyle strategies to um, prevent, reverse, and um, and um, manage disease. So in addition to the diet, because we've been told for a while, you know, eat a healthy diet, exercise, and sleep, and so forth. What specific things are people really looking into now as far as the diet other than, you know, eat the rainbow and so forth? What are there any specific recommendations that uh, are just kind of on the horizon and people are really starting to appreciate new information? 
Um, yeah, so yeah, I think like you said, we, we, we eat the rainbow, um, the plant based diet, which is has been in the vo in vogue for a, a few years now. Um, the Mediterranean diet again, that's not really new either. Um, but the uh, the plant based, oh, it's just been a flexitarian. So I, you, you know, you don't have to completely eliminate meat uh, from your diet and animal products because uh, some people can't do that. But just increasing the amount of um, plant based foods that you eat, that's at least uh, that's one step towards um, uh, that's one step towards better health and um, decreasing chronic disease. Uh, so um, yeah, I would say. Um, a lot of the concepts, um, uh, things that are well are known, um, um, it, 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 it been known for a while. So, like the not, like eating nuts, um, you know, like I said, uh, being being planned forward. Um, but but what we're getting now is more data showing how the impact of these um, lifestyle changes have on um, chronic disease, preventing and reversing chronic disease and showing that it's actually um, beneficial and there's actually a real world impact uh, to these um, strategies. Certainly mentioned some studies are showing how some diseases can be reversed. Um, could you give us an example of that? Uh, so cardiovascular disease. Um, so there have been studies that show that uh, with certain lifestyle strategies, um, um, eating, um, more plant-based uh, foods and um, eating nuts in uh, your diet, uh, it's possible with these um, strategies to reverse um, cardiovascular disease, for example. So are they using like cardiac catheterization images or when they say they're reversing it, what specifically um, are they basing that on? Yes, yeah. So, so they are, yeah. So they are. So they're using um lab testing and um, images to show that they have actually um, there's actually reversal of disease, and also show that uh, and also um, just show that you know people do not um uh, people don't have um especially people who have had MIs uh, might have had attacks in the past and they don't have um they have um, fewer the chances of them having a repeat heart attack is lower if they um eat um, the lifestyle, if they practice lifestyle medicine, exercise, eat um, properly plant-based foods and, and nuts and so on and so forth, yeah. So with heart attack being the major cause of death in this country, the potential to turn around is tremendous. Um, I mean, more people die of heart attacks than so many other things put together. Yeah, What's exactly, yeah, exactly. What's yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I was just going to say my family, I see that too, um, you know. Um, and, and so for me, it's something that is personal because I um, w w there's a family history of heart attacks and especially at a young age and even after, you know, taking medications, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it still didn't um, stop that. Um, so um, really honing into lifestyle medicine and um, following those principles has been very helpful for us. What specific nuts do you recommend the most? Um, so some of it is, you know, based on tolerance, but um, I try to eat peanuts uh, myself. There's uh, peanuts, um, 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 almonds are good as well. Um, cashews are good. So, um, so this, you know, I, 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 I don't have any specific ones. I think it's what what you can eat. And what you like or, or what you don't have a reaction to um, would, would um, certainly work. Are there any types of oils that you would recommend or suggest that people stay away from? Um, yeah, so, well, definitely um, animal-derived um, oils and um, also oils that have um, high levels of trans fat. So we're looking at, um, you know, things like palm oil, for example. Um, I really like olive oil. I definitely recommend that. Um, th that's my two. And there's there's also avocado oil. Um, I you know I know a lot of people like um, coconut oil, but it's I I don't really I don't recommend that in terms of um, it's the type of fats that you find in coconut oil. Definitely not recommended. Um, and then definitely, you know, it's funny, I find it interesting. I don't see it as much, but a few years ago, I would see all this and the people on the paleo diet eating lard and animal fats and 
you know, things like that, which is not, is definitely not uh, recommended. Uh, uh, just like pure animal fat that I would certainly not recommend that. So, um, yeah, I, I read olive oil is a, it's a favorite of mine. Um, I, I really very highly recommend olive oil out of all the oils. Mine I too. I can put olive oil on, I can dip my bread in olive oil, put it on my celery. Yeah. <laughs> I started to overdose in olive oil and particularly yeah. if you don't have high blood pressure, you don't have to worry about your, your sodium intake. You take some, olive oil you warm it you put some sea salt in it and you just dip your food in there and it's just it's a treat that's my favorite that's one of my favorites actually you (laughs) olive oil salt and put it in and tomatoes and maybe some herbs i love it i love that it's a little bit of garlic yeah you you can really spice up your food and you know that's really important because a lot of people let's say that you have high blood pressure a lot of people they still pour salt on things because they need the flavor. Um, yeah. But olive oil, you put olive oil and garlic together, a little bit of pepper, you know, uh, fresh lemon. I mean, you can you can season anything with that. Yeah, it and is. And you have a much healthier diet. And um, so I love that as well. So can you give me any other information that you want to share with the audience today? Are there any other juicy tidbits that you want uh, to give the uh, you and audience today? Well, I think one thing I would say uh, is uh, stress is is it's is really important to control. So I I don't think that people realize how much um, damage that they could do to their body just being in a case in a state of constant stress Mm -hmm. and we are in you know the modern world is very stressful so just taking that time out for yourself uh, self-care is very important Um, don't let your needs and your uh, and just taking that time out to breathe and make sure that um, you're taking care of yourself don't let it pass by because um, in fact, I, I, I believe a study just came out recently talking about the effects of stress and things like bre- breast cancer and all the uh, breast cancer effects. too, Le- long-term effects. Yeah. 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 So, oh my gosh. so it's just, it's, so it's really important to, um, um, in this, you know, crazy world that we're in, um, to, um, uh, to keep stress under control. And, you know, there's a, there are a lot of ways you can do that meditation, um, I know the hypnotherapy even and other, and, and you were just, you know, listening to music, mm-hmm. calming music and uh, taking the time off uh, to do that. Take care of yourself. So we definitely live in a very stressful environment. One thing that I did, I used to like to get massages, you know, before the pandemic. Uh, I would do it, you know, at least once a year, but I found, you know, you can go online and they had these massagers that, I mean, they're, they do wonders. You can certainly just plug it up and just completely take yourself to another level. It's just so, they're just so relaxing, you know, with the neck and the back and so forth. So there's so much that can be done. The um, certain scents, lavender, uh, some herbal teas are really good just to calm you down at the end of the day. And a lot of people unfortunately have gotten into drinking heavily as their means to decrease stress. But there are so many other things. Exercise is huge. Yeah, it's huge you know, yeah. Releasing those endorphins, feeling better, relieving the stress, getting plenty of sleep at night, resting. So all of those things are, are tremendous as far as stress. And stress is really a killer. People don't realize that. But if you don't control your stress, then, I mean, you can get your diabetes out of whack, impact your heart. High blood pressure, and- yeah. It's just, I'm surprised, saddened, but surprised that um, it's even shown to impact your, your breast cancer issues. That's another can of worms. Yeah, so. I, I also have a massage chair. So it seems we have a lot of things in common. I also have a massage chair too. And I, I find it really helps me with the stress and the massage. And um, um, so, yeah, so I, 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 I completely agree with you on, on all that, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on today. How do you want people to reach you? Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we can, um, we we're, uh, we have a website, um, 
I uh, we can you know reach reach out there if you have any questions or help with IBS or any other gut related issues. Um, um, Facebook and and um, Twitter we have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. All all of them are uh, at Casa de Sante. So that's a uh, um, that's a, a that's our name for these for all those um, um, accounts. So we can be found there. So at the end of this video and also in the text, I'm going to put all that information so people will know how to reach out to you if they have any further questions. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again for having me. Thank you so much for coming. You have a blessed day. You too. Take care. Okay, bye bye.